Welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about how to integrate hyperbolic functions. And so previously we introduced the hyperbolic functions and how to take their derivatives using these derivative rules. But now if we want to integrate these hyperbolic functions, we can reverse these derivative rules and get our integration rules, right? Because differentiation and integration are opposite operations. And so if we integrate the derivatives of these derivative rules, we will have the integration rules for our hyperbolic functions. And so here are the integration rules that reverse those derivative rules. We have that the integral of hyperbolic cosine of u du is equal to hyperbolic sine of u plus c. Then we have that the integral of hyperbolic sine of u du is equal to hyperbolic cosine of u plus c. And then next we have the integral of hyperbolic secant squared of u du is equal to hyperbolic tangent of u plus c. We have that the integral of hyperbolic cosecant of u times hyperbolic cotangent of u times du is equal to negative hyperbolic cosecant of u plus c. And then we have that the integral of hyperbolic secant of u times hyperbolic tangent of u du is equal to negative hyperbolic secant of u plus c. And then finally, we have that the integral of hyperbolic cosecant squared of u du is equal to negative hyperbolic cotangent of u plus c. Okay, and so these are all the basic integration rules that we need to know for hyperbolic functions. And so now let's look at some example problems where we will use these integration rules. And so for our first example, we have the integral of three times hyperbolic sine of x times dx. And to integrate this function, we just need to know the integration rule for the hyperbolic sine function. And so if we pull this constant multiple of three to the outside of the integral, we'll have that this is equal to three times the integral of hyperbolic sine times dx, and then we can use this rule to integrate this function. And so this integration rule here can be applied in scenarios where you would want to use u substitution, and that would be for more complex integrals or when you have a hyperbolic function that has a function other than x inside of it. In this case, since we just have hyperbolic sine of x dx, we don't really need to use u substitution, and we can just integrate this function directly into the hyperbolic cosine function. And so what we'll have is that this is equal to three times hyperbolic cosine of x plus c. Okay, and so that is the solution to this integral or the antiderivative of this function. So for our next example, we wanna integrate hyperbolic cosine of two x times dx. And for this integral, we're going to need to use the integral rule for hyperbolic cosine. And we know that the integral of hyperbolic cosine of u du is equal to hyperbolic sine of u plus c. Now, if you look at our function here in the integral, notice that the function inside the hyperbolic cosine function is not just x like it was in our previous example for hyperbolic sine. And so because of that, we are going to need to use u substitution, right? Specifically, we're going to want to set u equal to that inside function. And so we'll have that u is equal to 2x, and then we will want to take the derivative of that. So we'll have du dx is equal to two, right? The derivative of 2x would be two, because when you take the derivative of x to the first power, it's just equal to its coefficient, which is two. And then if we solve for du here by multiplying both sides by dx, we'll have that du is equal to two times dx. And then remember, when you use u substitution, whatever du is equal to, you wanna make sure that that can be found within your integral. And so in this case, do we see two times dx in our integral? Well, I see dx right here, but I don't see a constant multiple of two within this integral. And so what we're going to want to do is divide both sides of this equation by two. And so then what we'll have is du divided by two is equal to dx. And now we have a term of du that is equal to something that we can find in our integral. And so now we can rewrite this integral in terms of u, and we'll have that it is equal to the integral of hyperbolic cosine of u times du divided by two, right? So we replace two x with u because that's what we set it equal to. And we replace dx with du divided by two because that's what we found that that was equal to. And so if we pull this constant multiple of one half out to the front of this integral, we will have that this is equal to one half times the integral of hyperbolic cosine of u times du, which now matches up with this integration rule here. 
And so we can integrate this to become the hyperbolic sine function. And so we'll have that this is equal to one half times hyperbolic sine of u plus c. And so now all we have left to do to finish off this answer is to replace u with what we set it equal to, which was 2x. And so we will have that this is equal to 1 half times hyperbolic sine of 2x plus c. And that is the solution to this integral. Next, we have the integral of x squared times hyperbolic secant squared of x cubed times dx. And so for this integral, we're going to need to use the integration rule for hyperbolic secant squared. However, notice that we have a function other than just x within that hyperbolic secant function, right? We have x cubed. And so we're probably going to want to use u substitution on this integral in order to integrate it using this integration rule. But remember, when you set something equal to u, you want to make sure that its derivative can also be found within the integral. And so if we set u equal to this inside function of x cubed, is its derivative in this integral? Well, remember, when you take the derivative of a cubic function, the exponent is going to decrease by one, and so you'd have an x squared function, which I see right here. And so we have located the derivative of the function that we wanna set equal to u. And so we know that u substitution is going to work for this integral. And so we'll have that u is equal to x cubed, and then if we take the derivative, we'll have that du dx is equal to 3x squared, right? That's using the power rule for derivatives. We multiply the exponent down to have three times x to the power of the exponent minus one, and so three minus one is two, okay? And so then if we solve for du by multiplying both sides by dx, we will have that du is equal to 3x squared dx, and so then whatever du is equal to, we wanna make sure that we can find that within our integral, and so we're looking for 3x squared dx, However, I only see an x squared and a dx. I don't see a constant multiple of three. And so to adjust for that, we're going to divide both sides by three. And so if we do that, we will have that du divided by three is equal to x squared dx. And now we have a term of du that is equal to something that we can find within our integral, x squared and dx. Okay, and so we can now rewrite this integral in terms of u, and so we'll have that it is equal to the integral of hyperbolic secant squared u times du divided by three. And so we can pull this constant multiple of one third out to the front of the integral. And so we'll have that this is equal to one third times the integral of hyperbolic secant squared u times du, which matches up with our integration rule over here that we can use to integrate it into the hyperbolic tangent function. And so this will be equal to one third times hyperbolic tangent of u plus c. And so then all we have to do to finish off this solution is to replace u with what we set it equal to, which was x cubed. And so this is equal to one third times hyperbolic tangent of x cubed plus c. And that is the solution to this integral. For our next example, we have the integral of hyperbolic cosecant squared of the natural log of x divided by x times dx. And so in order to integrate this function, I'm thinking that we're going to need to use this integration rule for hyperbolic cosecant squared u times du because we have a hyperbolic cosecant squared function in the integral. However, in order to do that, it looks like we are going to need to use u substitution first because we have a function that is not x inside the hyperbolic cosecant squared function. However, in order to use u substitution and set u equal to the natural log of x, we need to make sure that that function's derivative is somewhere within the integral. And so, what is the derivative of the natural log function? Well, remember that the derivative of the natural log of x is equal to one divided by x. And so do you see this derivative or this function of one divided by x in this integral? Well, it looks like we have it right here, right? We have x in the denominator of this function. And so one would be multiplied by this function, right? One divided by x can be found in this integral. And so we should be able to use u substitution for this integral if we set u equal to the natural log of x. And so let's try it we'll have that u is equal to the natural log of x. 
And then the derivative of that du dx will be equal to one divided by x like we just discussed. And so then if we solve for du by multiplying both sides by dx, we will have that du is equal to one divided by x times dx. And so now what du is equal to right here can be found within our integral. We have one divided by x times dx. And so we can replace that with du and rewrite this integral in terms of u. And so we'll have that this is equal to the integral of hyperbolic cosecant squared of u times du, right? We replaced the natural log of x with u because that's what we set it equal to. And we replaced one divided by x times dx with du because that's what we found that that was equal to. And so now we can use this integration rule for the integral of hyperbolic cosecant squared u du for this integral right here right, it's the exact same integral. And so we'll have that this is equal to negative hyperbolic cotangent of u plus c. And so now all we have to do to finish this solution is to replace u with what we set it equal to, which is the natural log of x. And so this is equal to negative hyperbolic cotangent of the natural log of x plus c. And that is the solution to this integral or the antiderivative of this function. For our next example, we have the integral of hyperbolic secant of x minus four times hyperbolic tangent of x minus four times dx. And so this integral is going to be solved using this integration rule that the integral of hyperbolic secant of u times hyperbolic tangent of u du is equal to negative hyperbolic secant of u plus c. And so in order to use this integration rule, we're probably going to need to use u substitution on this integral, specifically because we have a function other than x within each of these hyperbolic functions. And so thankfully the function inside each of these functions is the same function, right? It's x minus four. And so we can probably set that equal to u and use u substitution for this integral. Now, remember what I said earlier, whatever you set equal to u, the function's derivative needs to be within this integral, but note that the derivative of x to the first power is just equal to its coefficient, which would just be some constant, right? And so we're not worried about constants not being within our integral. We can always manipulate that when we are solving for du. It's only when we have variables that are not accounted for within your integral that you need to be worried about. And so in this case, we're gonna be just fine setting this inside function of x minus four equal to u. And so let me show you what I mean. We'll have that u is equal to x minus four and the derivative du dx of x is just going to be one and the derivative of negative four is zero because negative four is a constant and the derivative of all constants is zero. All right, and so then let's solve for du by multiplying both sides by dx. And so we'll have that du is equal to dx. And so then whatever du is equal to must be found within our integral, but it's just dx, which can be found pretty quickly. And so we're good to go here. We can rewrite our integral in terms of u. And so we will have that this is equal to the integral of hyperbolic secant of u times hyperbolic tangent of u times du. Right, we replaced x minus four in each of these locations with u because that's what we set it equal to. And we replaced dx with du because that's what that was equal to. All right, and so then we can use this integration rule for this integral and we'll have that this is equal to negative hyperbolic secant of u plus c. And then all we have to do is replace u with what we set it equal to, which is x minus four. And we'll have our final solution that this integral is equal to negative hyperbolic secant of x minus four plus c. And that will be our solution to this integral. For our last example, we have the integral of hyperbolic cosecant of the square root of x times hyperbolic cotangent of the square root of x divided by the square root of x times dx. And so in order to solve this integral, we're going to use this integration rule that the integral of hyperbolic cosecant of u times hyperbolic cotangent of u times du is equal to negative hyperbolic cosecant of u plus c. But before we can do that, we're going to need to use u substitution on this integral. And I think our most reasonable choice is to set u equal to the function inside each of these hyperbolic functions, right? So that would mean we're setting u equal to the square root of x. And so if we were to do that, if we set u equal to the square root of x, is the derivative of the square root of x found in this integral? Well, let's go through the process of taking the derivative of the square root of x 
and then we will decide if its derivative is in this integral. And so first, note that we can rewrite the square root of x to be equal to x to the 1 half power, and that will help us see how to take the derivative of this using the power rule. And so du dx will be equal to 1 half times x to the negative 1 half power. Right, we multiply the power down, so we have 1 half times x to the power of that exponent minus 1. Right, so 1 half minus 1 is negative 1 half. And so if we move this x to the denominator so that its exponent will become positive, we'll have that du dx is equal to 1 divided by 2 times x to the 1 half power. But then remember, x to the 1 half power is the same as the square root of x. And so we technically have 2 times the square root of x in the denominator of this function. And so now this is du dx, or the derivative of u. And so do you see this function in this integral. Well, I see 1 divided by the square root of x in our integral, but I don't see that 2 in the denominator, but that's not a big deal because we can adjust for constant multiples later on. And so we can be sure that u substitution is going to work in this case because we found 1 divided by the square root of x within our integral. And so now let's solve for du. Let's multiply both sides by dx. So we'll have du is equal to 1 divided by 2 times the square root of x dx. But since I don't see a 2 in the denominator of our integral, we're going to need to multiply both sides by 2 to cancel out with this 2 so that what is on this side of this equation can be found in our integral. And so we'll have 2 times du is equal to 1 divided by the square root of x times dx. And now we have a term of du that can replace something that we can find in our integral so that our integral can be rewritten entirely in terms of u. And so we can do that now. We can rewrite this integral, and we'll have that it is equal to the integral of hyperbolic cosecant of u times hyperbolic cotangent of u times 2 times du. Right, we replace the square root of x in both of these hyperbolic functions with u because that's what we set it equal to, and we replaced 1 divided by the square root of x times dx with 2 times du because that's what we found that that was equal to. All right, and so now if we pull this 2 to the outside of the integral, we'll have that this is equal to 2 times the integral of hyperbolic cosecant of u times hyperbolic cotangent of u times du, which matches up with our integration rule right here. And so we can integrate this function into negative hyperbolic cosecant of u plus c. And so if we clean up our work here, we will have that this is equal to 2 times negative hyperbolic cosecant u plus c. And so now all we have to do to finish off this solution is to replace u with what we set it equal to, which is the square root of x, and that will give us the final solution to this integral. And so we'll have that this is equal to negative 2 times hyperbolic cosecant of the square root of x plus c. And that is the solution to this integral. All right, and so with that, that's all I had for this lesson. If you want to see some more examples, feel free to check out our examples video that I'll have linked at the end of this video as well as in the description below. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. But if you don't have any questions, this is all I had for now. So I will see you next time.